Hey everyone, just before we start the episode, it's a quick shout out to all our lovely, 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 lovely Patreons. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be able to produce such high quality banter and science. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> uh, but seriously, we'd like to thank the following people. Yelena Malusnich, Craig Porter. Ryan G. Kevin Terman. Gary Nolan. Robert Condon. Jessica Menendez. Sarah Talk Podcast. Paul Kvisgaard. Daniel Raymond. Alexandra Phil. The Shazza. Brandon Zare. Frank Alechnowitz. Cheese Dick McDouche Nozzle Esquire. And Cameo Winnets. Thank you very much, guys, for sharing our... Uh, our experience with the world and sharing your dollars with us. Thank you. It all goes straight back into the show. And even though now we still run the show at a loss, but we love you guys and we wouldn't be able to do it without you. And also all the other Patreons who donate each month too. We really appreciate it. And we love you guys. We've got many more Patreons who still give their hard-earned money as well. So thank you very much. If you would like to become a Patreon, you can visit us at patreon.com slash podcast, or you can visit our website, sci-gasm.com. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the episode. Oh, oh hang on. Oh, um, oh hang on. Oh, oh, dude, is sorry. your nose bleeding again? Yeah, sorry. Dude, have you been picking it? Maybe. Oh, fuck. Look, hang there's on, a hang toilet on. up there. Yeah, hang on. I'll just go. Oh, I'll wait for you here. Oh, thanks, dude. Oh. Oh. Oh, what is that in your nose? A couple of tampons. They're really good at blocking the That's blood from getting out. That's disgusting. I know. I can't believe people just threw these away. The one in my left nostril was barely used. Oh, dude. Oh, it's not that bad, you know. Because your nose is already bleeding, you don't even notice the smell. Oh, my God. What? You're sick. I'm just trying to recycle, man. It's good for the planet. Oh, You're a capitalist pig. Hey Wade, what's going on? Not much, Ben. What's happening? Not much. You've been recycling, taking care of your wares. My what? Your wares. You know, your home wares. Everything you're wasting, basically. Oh, okay. Uh, look, I could be much better at it. I, yeah? I, I recycle when I can, but like, it's just... It's really hard to remember. That's really? what I found. Well, like, I get a coffee each morning, and I'll, like, I'll buy like a reusable cup, and I'm like, all right, good, you know. Then you're like... You've got a Hulk reusable cup, mate. How I could do you forget? I do, and one. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. Just collecting the Avengers of coffee cups? Yeah, yeah, I know. It's just... I don't know, I just keep forgetting to bring it along. Like, I like a jumbo, like a tall kind of Yeah, one. I often forget the shopping bags when I go shopping and have to get another plastic bag. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, and I've got I've got so many reusable bags from because I feel bad. I'm like, oh, look, I better buy some reusable bags. Then I go, I forget. I'm like, oh, look, better buy some reusable bags. <laughs> so I'm pretty much just wasting reusable bags. I've got a fucking like, drawer under my sink full of just reusable bags. Spent wasted more on just getting reusable bags and the resources it requires to make them than just getting the plastic yeah. bags. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I'm, I think I'm actually wasting more resources by buying these <laughs> reusable bags and just using plastic bags. Well, look, today on, on the topic of resources, we're going to mm-hmm. be talking about recycling. So there's some things we're just going to have to get brand new and there's a whole lot of things that we can use where we recycle them now there is a difference between like recycling reusing what's what's the other word r word reducing yeah okay so we're talking about the recycling part today the yeah. three r's that's how bad we are i couldn't even remember the third r <laughs> all right now generally speaking when we're talking recycling we're probably talking plastics okay now plastics are amazing let's be honest right now look how many plastics shits around us right now. yeah no oh you know? it's crazy how how useful you know and how malleable and stuff like that it is and yeah it is it's probably one of the greatest successes and probably failures of the modern world really Mm. like the amount of stuff we can make out of plastic is just phenomenal ever since it came in as bakelite whatever that was the original plastic and the diversity in plastic you know they got the little number recycling things we have so Mm. many different kinds of plastics we can use for just a ridiculous amount of stuff yeah but the problem is because it's so useful and so overused, it just ends up everywhere. Because it doesn't break down, it ends up as a huge part of landfill. Yeah, well, you see like those photos of birds and stuff like that being cut open and it's got all that plastic inside. Yeah, of them. did you see that whale that washed up? It had like 36 kilos of plastic in its oh, gut. A sperm whale man. washed up on a beach. 36 oh, 
six Jeez. kilos. That's crazy. Now, you, you know how they make plastic? Um, oh, I used to know the reaction. Back. Oh, not too much. Where does it come from, mate? What, what, what's the natural resource we're making plastic out of? Uh, you know, I wouldn't even be able to tell you that. Really? I, I used to know. It's crude oil. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's a fractional distillation. My apologies. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. I'm yeah. thinking... I was like, what are you yeah, doing? Yeah, what are you doing this for? <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Yes. It comes from crude oil, fractional distillation. Yep. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. So about... 8% of all the world's oil and gas. So all the stuff we mine actually goes into making plastics. Yeah, that okay. includes like as a resource for making plastics as well as the energy required to produce the plastic. So the yeah. manufacturing energy, which is crazy when you think about it. Like all the petrol, all the gas and bitumen, all the stuff we get from crude oil, 8% of all of that stuff goes into just making plastics. Mm. Right? Obviously, this shit is unsustainable. Yeah, that makes sense. Like. Yeah. But look at all the stuff that comes from oil. Like, like it or not, oil is such a useful, yeah, substance. Oh, it is. It's incredible. It is, like, you know, you can get things like you can get like methane, propane, gas oh. at lower temperatures. You can get like, you know, like bitumen stuff like that. The really kind of, really kind of like they're, they're at the low, no, the really lubricants, high temperatures, yeah, lubricants, bitumen, all that type yeah, of stuff. Heaps of stuff. Petroleum jelly for wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you don't want to use petroleum jelly for uh, other yes. related things? Just yes. so you know. Yes, because it, it um, because it, it eats away at the uh, the condom material, the latex, doesn't it? It eats away. At what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because a lot of people think that yeah, like it'll act as a lube when the, well, it will, but it will break down the um, yeah the yeah. latex. So, like, obviously, with all this use, we, when we're talking plastics, we need to start talking recycling. Like, at the end of the day, everyone wants to. Everyone knows that we mm. need to recycle. Now, heads up to you and everyone else who's listening right now. I have a shit ton of studies to go through. Oh. Okay, I did a lot of research here. Okay, they're all good ones. Don't worry. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure they're <laughs> as exciting as the one that preceded it. Uh, you'll understand why. Let me let me get into it, and then you'll understand why I had to go through so many. Okay, so let, let's start having a look at the shall we say attitudes towards recycling. So the first study I want to start with is a 2009 study from the Proceedings of the Royal Society, and that suggested that about 25 percent of all plastic production in the UK, this is specific to the UK, is just used in household packing. So all the plastic that goes into the UK. So that's for building, whatever, is just packaging shit that you get from the supermarket in your house. Yep. Okay. Now, of all the waste plastic, the packaging accounts for about 58% of it. Wow. So production, it's about 25%. Of the waste, the plastic at the end is almost 60% of it. So that, oh, God. Yeah, so there's a huge, huge amount of wastage from the homes, is, obviously. Is that from just not being able to recycle it, or is that just from people's laziness not... Well, that's one of the open-ended questions, isn't it? Are people too lazy to recycle or do we not have the uh, infrastructure and things set up to recycle it? But yeah. that, that's where most of our problems come from. The home. It's not infra- uh, industry. It's not manufacturing. It's us in the house. It's household plastics. That's where our waste yeah. is coming well, from. Well, even like plastic bags. I know a lot of places now are banning plastic bags, like supermarkets and stuff like that. Yeah. So this study talks about technological as well as social hurdles for recycling. Mm. So from those plastic bags, we're not recycling. Do you recycle your soft plastics? Um. Well, I, I, you know, I wouldn't even be able to tell Have you. Have you got a bag of bags in your? Oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I've got a bag of bags. Yeah, I, so I use it for like dog mess. Them, yeah. yeah, yeah, no. Well, I even if I know it sounds silly, but I'll actually keep the bags and I'll I'll reuse them for like you know bringing lunch you know, to and from work and stuff like that. Oh, that's good. I've got a, I've got a drawer full of them even at work. There's one of the R's. Yeah, you're reusing. Yeah, well, I am. Yeah, and I'll, I'll bring like I'll take my lunch in, but I'll also when I've got empty containers and stuff like that, I'll use the bag to bring them home. And then if we need a mess bag for Luna, I'll just use a plastic bag there. That's yeah, okay. when that's the end of the line for yeah. the bag. For the bags, it's just go. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Once it's got shit in it, <laughs> I'm not gonna, reusing. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh dear. All right. Well, there was another study, a 1992 study, this time in the US, specifically Illinois, which started looking at attitudes towards the behaviour. This was cool of four distinct areas regarding recycling and by distinct i mean different socioeconomic areas Mm -hmm. so attitudes wealth voting all that kind of stuff they made sure there was different and what they said is there was no way to clearly analyze what it was about each community that made them want to or not want to recycle so this means basically that human choices can't be accounted for based on the community alone so every community is different the individuals within that community don't allow us to measure the attitudes towards recycling wow okay now, what this study suggested was that motivation to recycle was very minimally influenced by available programs, and the most common reason for recycling was actually because people wanted to save resources or, you know, save the environment. I, I think 
at a fundamental level, I don't think there's anyone that doesn't want to help the environment. Yeah, I think so too. I think if you were to say, hey, you can do this to protect the environment or you can do that, both requiring the same amount of effort, what do you want to do? People say, well, obviously I want to protect the environment because yeah. it's, it's that... It's that natural want to keep things the way they are. I think so too, yeah. I, that's no why I think it would be my fucking... driving force yeah. behind recycling is, you know, looking out for the future. Yeah, absolutely. All right, absolutely. well, look, here, I've got another study from the US, 1995, so only a couple of years after, and it showed that attitudes were actually most greatly influenced by factors such as pressure and perceived costs in regards to recycling. So how the society views them and what they think the cost is. So this means that people were more likely to recycle if they felt there was an expectation to recycle and that there was a perceived cost-benefit relationship mm. so they think it saved them money. Mm. So this sort of, you know, a bit different, but another study. Another bro, suggesting a thing in New South Wales where you can get, you know, cash back for giving cans and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, cans and bottles, you get 10 cents back per bottle. That's a pretty good deal, I reckon. Yeah. That's a nice little incentive there. Well, especially for young kids trying to get pocket money or something like that. Yeah, that's absolutely. A, there you go. Kids idea. go and pick up some rubbish. Yeah, just stay away from the pointy things. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, another study from 2007. This time was out of the UK again, uh, and it was from a sample of 673 respondents about waste management behavior, and it said that the most significant waste management behavior predictor was based on the individual's underlying attitude towards the environment, although it said that recycling was highly normative. So they have programs already set up. So people are already recycling. Mm. Whether they want to or not is more dependent on the individual. Okay. So this is saying we've got recycling programs set up. So people do recycle because it's normative behavior, but some people are more inclined to reduce and reuse because of their attitudes towards the environment. Yeah. I, I have to say, when I was growing up, I wasn't the biggest recycler of materials. I just was just lazy. I didn't know what Whatever happened, was where it went. Just chuck it, just in. Chuck it in there. Yeah. And as I've obviously gotten older and, you know, somewhat, some might say a little bit wiser, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I've definitely kind of taken more of a an active approach to recycling, ensuring that I'm recycling rather than going, oh, fuck it, they'll just go, they have to do it there. Yeah. Well, one thing I found was interesting when doing our research is you and I live in the same council. Our council does allow styrofoam in its recycling bins. Next council over, where my father and grandmother live, do not allow really? styrofoam. So one council apart. I don't know where they're setting their recycling to. Surely yeah. it's the same plant. I don't know how that works, but anyway. All right, let me keep going. Like I said, there's a lot of studies to get through here, so, oh, so bear God. with me. Okay, 2010 study, this time from the British Journal of Social Psychology, confirmed all of those previous studies saying there is a complicated interplay of attitude of control and availability of programs which predicts the likelihood of an individual to recycle and maintain their recycling habits. Okay, so we've got studies there saying that it's nothing to do with monetary incentives. It's more to do with individual attitudes. We've got studies saying it's more to do with the community they live in. And we've got other studies saying that there is a monetary incentive or a cost-benefit relationship as well. So what can we take from all these studies? We don't know. No, basically, I take from these <laughs> studies is social science is a bit shit. <laughs> Okay, like, oh my God, how many studies can they do to just have completely contradicting information, okay? <laughs> and this is Britain and the UK, most of them, so they're not completely yeah, different. Yeah, I, I was about to say, I thought to myself, oh, well, maybe they're different countries. I thought, no, Royal Society, and then obviously yeah. the la latest I've got study. three studies from the US, two from the UK. You're like, oh, social yeah. science, get your shit together. Yeah. You yeah. know, oh my gosh. Now... Yeah. The other thing that we can take out of it, which seems to be a recurring theme when you have to nitpick through it, and this is why I had to have so many studies, because I had to read so much to get something out of this fucking science, <laughs> was that most people seem to be habitual and they're conformist. So basically, we're everything we don't want to be. <laughs> you know, We don't want to be creatures of habit and we don't want to conform to the social norms. But that's exactly what we do. This is what we desire. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. We prefer to be lazy. So if we have options, we need, literally need them sent to our door. There are recycling options everywhere. But unless someone's coming to literally pick up your bin, you're probably not going to recycle. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. 100%. So how do we change then? If we've got such these crappy attitudes, these conformist attitudes, what do we need to do to change our well, I guess, recycling Unfortunately, behaviors? you have to make things more convenient for people. Like I know one of the big things, as we are discussing before, like how the council next next to our council, they are um like they don't you know recycle this but they recycle that and there's so much inconsistency in what mm -hmm. you can and can't recycle depending on where you are that a lot of people go oh I don't know if I can recycle this or not oh well that'll just go in there and as well like it was only 
Oh God, less than it. Oh, probably about about a year ago that I realised that I found out that you can't recycle coffee cups. Yeah, that's crazy. With I the had no plastic idea. Paper combo thing. Yeah, I had absolutely no idea you can do that. So I was thinking, oh, yeah, I'll put in the recycling bin. And I realised that I'm just. You know, causing more damage and more resource, you <laughs> Keep know, stopping usage. that production line. Like, yeah. Oh, great, here's some more fucking coffee cups you have to get out. <laughs> yeah. Who the fuck's this Wade guy? Yeah. <laughs> Why does he write his name on his fucking... Yeah, um, yeah so, well, it is. Like, our, our bins in our... We've got the paper combined plastic recycling yes, right we now. Do. Things. Yeah, the next council over, you have to separate paper and plastic for their bins. And I know there's yeah. some councils where you have to separate glass plastic and paper as well so they have three different recycling bins wow too. in some countries you have to separate the type of glass from clear brown and green even wow okay so what we generally find is that the more recycling you have to do like at the home the less likely you are to recycle so mm. i had to read an economic article Wade. <laughs> oh, no. this is 2011 the american I, economic review from 2011 I, can, I was like i feel dirty <laughs> i can see the pain in your oh, eyes it was terrible i'm like why am i dabbling in this area now <laughs> now what this article argued was that it said there was very little that we can do to actually change attitudes towards the environment and social norms are kind of like not likely to lead to significant individual behaviours. Mm. You know, so a change in social norms is not going to change the individual that much. So they said the best way we can change recycling behaviours is economic incentives. And that's like bottle deposits, uh, recycling laws as well. So if you're not recycling, you get fined. So yeah, positive or fair negative enough, influences. Fair enough. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there was another study, 2010, out of Malaysia, which suggested that people are far more likely to use recycling stations or the drop-off points or whatever when it's convenient. So they've got to be close. So if mm. we build more of them, people are going to recycle. You know? That's a fair point. Yeah. And obviously, if they've got some money involved with them, so you're exchanging your recycling, getting some money out of it, people are more likely to recycle too. Mm. You know? Now, the interesting thing from this 2010 study uh, said that factors like age and education actually affect the likelihood of your recycling habits. Oh, really? Yeah. So okay. younger people are more likely to recycle and higher educated people are more likely to recycle. Oh. Uh-huh. Older people who are more inclined to just throw things out or less educated people. But that, would might, be... that might be a habitual thing, though, because the recycling wasn't so prominent back totally. 30, they might just 40 not years know how ago. To do it. Yeah, they might just not know how yeah. to do it. They might just not be aware. It's a habit. It's like, well, I did this before. I'll do it again. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the argument there is if the incentive to make people who otherwise are indifferent to recycling has to come from legislators, what are the costs associated with this? So if we're mm. forcing people to recycle, then we have to bring in ways for them to recycle, buildings, trucks, whatever, infrastructure that allows them to recycle. So mm. is it actually worth it for governments to recycle? Mm. Okay, in a 2010... Well, is it, burn? Is, is it? it? <laughs> well, social science, I had to go through a lot of fucking studies here. I should have written out how many studies I went through here. I'm pretty sure I could write a thesis on this shit now. Oh, God. I should have a reference list at the end of the episode. Jesus. <laughs> so a 2010 study showed that costs associated with recycling were consistently higher than those with just regular waste collection. So recycling actually costs money to councils. Rather than if you've got one bin, one pickup, one truck, it's all going to the same place, the landfill, it's actually cheaper than if you've got multiple but, bins, multiple yeah. pickups, they have to go to different places, they have to get sorted, you have to build plants, that kind yeah, of but stuff. You're not really that's the thing though, it's from a recycling point of view, the purpose of recycling isn't so it cut costs for local governments. Yeah, absolutely. you look at it as well though. It, it, does it make jobs? Like, that's another thing. Does it create new jobs, new industries? Yeah, you know, new factories. Like, like once again, it's it's if you're looking at it completely from an economic standpoint, on say one facet of the recycling process, well, then it may not be beneficial to some people. Yeah, absolutely. But it may be very beneficial and, you know, cheaper buying back products for companies. Well, there's that Vizzy. We've got Vizzy Recycling in Australia who have made millions out of collecting rubbish. You know? Yeah. I think they're the only waste paper collectors now that recycle it almost in Australia. They've almost got a monopoly on the industry. Yeah. You know, that's huge. I'd love to have a monopoly on something. Yeah. Just charge what you want. I don't even own Monopoly the game, so I'm well behind. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Mind you, that's probably a good thing. That's why your relationship with your wife is so strong. Oh, really? You never played Monopoly. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> It's, it's a deal breaker. I'm just is it? Is it? Oh, okay. man. I, families have fallen apart over that game, I swear to God. Really? Yeah. Okay. You've never played Monopoly? Sure. Oh, yeah. I played Monopoly when I was, like, younger, like, when I was a kid. You just didn't give a shit. It. Like, you just knew you were getting money every time you went around the board? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And, <laughs> like, I know, because, yeah, because you can dictate, like, other people's games as soon as you get in a position of power, don't you? Yeah, pretty much. 
basically the rule of thumb is if you land on Mayfair, fucking buy it. If you go into debt for it, you need Mayfair. Oh, really? Yeah, that's the okay. rule. Okay, we'll play some. We'll play some Monopoly. <laughs> I look forward to the podcast ending. <laughs> <laughs> Now, 2017 paper out of China. Now, the thing I liked about this one is because it's China, they have a huge spread. They've got an emerging middle class, a pretty thick lower class, and then quite a wealthy upper class as well. And they showed that incentives were the single best motivator for change, especially in lower income households, because all of a sudden they could get this extra money in by recycling. You know, they put in the effort. Mm. If they're only earning a dollar or two a day, all of a sudden going out and collecting a whole bunch of bottles or a whole bunch of plastics that they'd take to a thing and get money for was worth it. Mm. Okay, that makes sense. So they, that was your argument saying maybe we could create wealth through these recycling mm. programs as well. The costs aren't properly analysed. Well, that's, that's, what I, yeah, that's, what you'd, that's what you'd assume. Yeah, I'd hope so. Hey, like, we've got to make it so we want to. A lot of governments are more interested in money. Yeah, could you imagine if like, recycling was worse off for the environment and everything? It's like, oh, geez, we missed the mark with this one, didn't we? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, ooh, all right, well, let's just keep making plastics then. It's funny. Another thing I often think about is that you look at like previous civilizations and their demise and how often, quite often, it's a mystery. With our, with our current population and civilization, <laughs> uh, it's like, like, oh, yeah, that's how they did it. Yeah, that's that's so, right. like, what the fuck were they thinking? Yeah, they could see this coming as well. Yeah. They've clearly got the data for it. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's like, but, like, even if, like, you know, the, all the records were just deleted, you'd be like, that's still know that we fucked up. Like, we're, we're sitting here now going, yeah, we're fucking up here. It's like... Given Can you imagine 10,000 years' time, the rock strata they're going to look at? It's just going to have plastic <laughs> dotted all through it and cigarette butts and oh my <laughs> God. From our uh, calculations, it appears that this civilization was hit by a plastic meteorite. Yeah. <laughs> they literally buried themselves in trash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And there's a lot of radioactive waste, too. All over the place. Oh, man. You're not wrong. It's sad, isn't it? <laughs> it's just like there's so back. many things. Like, we have this incredible power, but... It's just like, oh, it's so obvious how this is going to end for us. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, think about it. Like, it's so obvious. Yeah. If this was a movie, you'd be like, ah, oh, fuck, I hate these movies. I already know how it ends. Yeah. <laughs> like, is Mother Earth's just money going to go, fuck off? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I just think it's incredible. It's like, this is totally going to play out like a really shit movie with a really obvious ending. Oh, yeah, exactly. I know. And like, well, <laughs> recycling could be a potential answer, but why don't we fucking recycle? We're, we're okay in Australia. We're one of the better countries at it, which is kind of sad when you and I are both sitting here going, I don't really care, and I only found out they actually recycled this a week ago. You know? <laughs> and we're, and and we're, we're one of the best, best countries <laughs> at it. You know, you're like, oh, Jesus, you know? Oh, it makes you think how other people are just like, Geez. what I found in London, which was incredible, is that people leave their trash in bags on the footpath. Yeah, they don't have bins? What, it just gets picked up? It just gets picked up. The trash bags on the side of the road. I know when I was in California, they have special trash bags you have to buy and there's a little tax associated with them and that tax pays for the rubbish retrieval. So if you don't have the right bag, your trash doesn't get picked up. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's a good idea. Maybe yeah. that's it. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Well, look, there was a 2016 study out of Florida which actually suggested simplifying uh, the recycling method we'll see a 15% increase in recycling materials. And they did this by having a look at, quote-unquote, a single stream, which means one recycling bin for all the recyclables, versus a dual stream collection method. So that's two bins. So something like paper versus a plastic Hang bin. Hang on, Burns, like a fight in the hockey. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back after this short message. <laughs> Get him! <laughs> Sorry, go on. <laughs> okay. So they found that the single stream was actually increased the level of recycling. So even though it's harder to sort and harder to deal with, people are more likely to recycle when they just have to put it in one bin. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I would probably be the same as well. I am the same because I only have one recycling bin when I think about it. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I'd probably do that. Well, well you do, Ben. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I have a greens bin as well, which I put out, you know, when I can be bothered mowing the lawn. <laughs> now... Pretty much all of these incentives might only... This is the good news, okay? These might, all incentives to try and get people to cycle might only be required for short term because we are seeing a shift in attitudes to recycling. Good. Yeah. So younger people and, like I said earlier, more educated people are far more likely to recycle. A 2012 study based on recycling habits of 200 university students, small sample size, but we'll let that slide, showed environmental awareness was a massive contributor to recycling behaviour. Didn't matter about convenience. Costs was not a significant determinant. People just wanted to recycle because they knew it was good for the environment. And they were willing to, which is a big difference between them and us. Yeah, look, that's a pretty crap study, though, in 
just university students. And only 200 of them. And Same university you could, too. I One know. University. You could go, like, if you went to, say, I don't know, like, here where you've got, I don't know, for instance, Western Sydney University, where you go to a science campus where a lot of people are doing environmental science and things like that. Yeah. You, you're going to get everyone say, yeah, I recycle. Yeah, I yeah. recycle. Uh, you need to look and say a little bit more. I'm sure they have addressed those areas. But, like, I often wonder as well, it's kind of Wade's kind of philosophical section. Wade's two cents. Yeah, Wade, that's what we call it, Wade's two cents. And it's going to be half an hour every episode <laughs> of my opinions. <laughs> I often wonder, though, is this environmental kind of protection thing uh, and this environmental awareness, is that just a youthful thing? Like, is that like... Do we get over it? Do we get, get over it as we get older? Like, it's kind of like, you know, you're more likely to have left-leaning political views when, when you're, you're younger, in your youth yeah. as opposed Idealistic. to when you're older. Before you get money and you're like, I don't have a, a, by the way, I don't have a reference on that. I'm not quoting that from a specific study. That's just my general kind of I think most people would agree with that assumption. Though. Yeah. I think that is a generally accepted assumption that yeah. older people generally vote more conservative yeah. or have more conservative behaviours. Mm. And I would say that's probably to do with wealth accumulation because you're more likely to go, wait, I've got money now. Let's not change <laughs> yeah, that much. Yeah, I have to share it with who? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Let's woo-woo. Let's yeah. slow down. Yeah. Okay. These people are coming over this border and taking that job yeah. I retired from. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear! Yeah, I don't know. That'd be a good one. I'm sure there are studies out there. Future yeah. episode, maybe, maybe, maybe yeah, you can do that one. I'm sick of reading these social <laughs> studies. No, oh, I'm so sick. I'm going to do something science. cool like Nickelback. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had to release some memes last night about sharing that, and it was fantastic. Looking through Nickelback memes, not one of them was positive. <laughs> Uh, Dave Grohl has a fantastic tweet about Nickelback. Oh, what did he say? I think it was, if you play a Nickelback record backwards, you might be able to hear the devil. But that's okay, because if you played it forwards, you'd hear Nickelback. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, it was good. Cool. <laughs> All right. Now, honestly, back to recycling. Back to recycling. Let's bring it back in. So yeah. even if we got 100% of people to recycle, that's really only half the battle done. Because after we recycle shit... We still need to turn it into stuff, and we still have to have people buy it. Mm, we still have this absolutely. viewpoint where new, non-recycled stuff is better. I know? wouldn't even... It, it really wouldn't bother me. No, like, I don't think it bothers me either. Like, if I mold in my Coke bottle or something yeah. like that, like, <laughs> that, that doesn't bother me. Like, it's re- made of recycled materials. Awesome. Yeah, I know that, but we're still a bit weird like that. We refuse to buy funny-shaped fruit as humans. Even though it's exactly the same, it's just got a bit of a oblong-shaped tomato instead of a nice spheroid. Mm. You know, I don't know what it is. Explains a lot why I didn't get. Explains a lot why I didn't get laid a lot in, uh, when I was younger. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. as long as what? it's not moldy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as long as it's not moldy and oddly shaped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Low standards. <laughs> a two thousand. You should have got laid more actually. <laughs> Uh, A 2005 paper suggested green consumption, as it was known in this paper, uh, was linked with other aspects of environmental action. Now, if sustainable lifestyles were to be achieved, it said that the uh, the paper suggested that the responsibility of this change actually lies at the feet Mm. of policymakers. So same with forcing people to recycle. We have to Mm. do it through legislation. It's not going to be an individual person change thing. Same with buying recycled material. It needs to be an individual person. uh, Sorry, a policy thing, not an individual thing. Okay, yep. Another paper, 2010, out of Canada, showed consumers are definitely willing to pay more for recycled products, but the problem with that is is they are actually easily swayed back to unrecycled products if they perceive a functional risk. So if they think that recycled products are inferior, they will quite readily go back to new products because they cost less and they think that they're better. There's a really good book, actually, called Screw Light Bulbs. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it was, it was, no, it was, it was really great. It was by two, um, two researchers at the Climate Change Research Center, Donna yeah. Green and who was the other one? It was, um, Minchin. Both work at, not, not. What time are remembering the author's names, mate? Oh, no, the book's behind me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and actually, uh, Green was my supervisor when I was doing my postgrad that I dropped out of. <laughs> But at least you got a free book out of it. Yeah, yeah. I got a free book, that's it. <laughs> and um, there was a lot under a desk. Um, <laughs> and it was actually really good because it's like saying, you know, how governments say to people, oh, you know, we need to make sure that, you know, you use environmentally friendly light globes and stuff, you know, power-saving globes and yada, yada, yada. 
And it's like, that ain't going to do shit when in you know, the biggest impact we have to change are things like our transport, our, our industries. And also as well, they brought some good ideas. And the, this is the reason why I brought it up. Yeah. Is there's things like, you know, clothes swapping and stuff like that now. There's the kind of activities, social activities that they're kind of saying, well, why don't you engage in this to be able to reuse clothes rather than just chucking them out or, you know, giving them to someone, you know, just, that sounds bad to the poor. Um, <laughs> you could have like a uh, you could have like a party, and you you kind of have a look at you, know, you, you have a clo- clothes swap pay, so something that doesn't fit you. Yeah, like we're talking about today. Oh, that's how great fat idea. We're getting. Yeah, you know, you could get along a fat. I'll friend. take your hand me down, yeah. Wade. Yeah, <laughs> yeah take, you take yeah. I'm not sure where you're going to get yours from, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, you get like a fatter friend, you bring them along, and you give them or like a skinnier friend. So everyone just got these size of friends. Yeah. There's this poor guy at the top yeah. of the scale going, "Oh, yeah, I know. I lose my closet to cut more room." <laughs> yeah, exactly. But there's all those type of ideas and you know, carpool. It, it, it's all that. It's all. It's kind of ways in which you manage. Yeah, it's it's quite a good book. So if you've got time to read it, yeah, screw light bulbs. It's actually a genuinely good read. It's yeah, actually okay. like, oh, cool. That makes sense. That is a great idea. So that is still shifting it back onto the individual there. Yeah. So how do we get these programs going? That's yeah. a really good question. You know, yeah. I reckon that's a fantastic idea. Clothes. And clothing waste is a huge problem as well. Yeah. We've focused a bit on plastics while recycling here, but let's be honest, we talk about clothing recycling, we have paper recycling, glass as well. Mm. We have a lot of different things that we really should be recycling. Absolutely. I just focus on plastic because that seems to be causing the most environmental damage long term. Yes, that does make sense. Yeah, which is like a 2003 study here out of Princeton, and there's a similar concept from 2001 out of MIT. Both of them are actually arguing what you were sort of saying is instead of putting the... Uh, onus on governments and legislators to shift it, maybe we should shift that back onto uh, production. Mm -hmm. So perhaps normalizing the manufacturing progress to use recycled materials might actually change how much we recycle too. So for Mm -hmm. example, Apple, instead of putting their phones in recycling set, if you bring your phone back and give it to us, we will give you a discount on your next iPhone and then they can reuse their materials. That's an awesome idea. Yeah, absolutely. And then people just get used to bringing their product or whatever it is back to where they got it from and that company saves money on their uh, materials and Absolutely. all that kind of stuff. That makes complete sense. It's not a bad idea. The MIT paper, this is kind of lefty crazy sort of stuff. I can I can already hear the conservatives oh. coming in going, settle down there. This MIT paper that said that individualization and liberalism uh, in choice has actually allowed for the environmental degradation. And it says a paradigm shift in social institutions and these different organizations that allow a variety – have caused the demise of our environment. So it says reduce choice, only give people one option for buying stuff, and then we'll actually be able to preserve the environment better. And to me, even as a left-leaning person of science, that <laughs> smells like communism. communism. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's like, um, well, we should only have elections every 30 years. Oh, yeah, I understand. And they'll be run by the government. That's right. It'll be a lot more uh, streamlined in government if we've got one guy making all the decisions, you know. Now, while I get the concept there, I don't think it's that simple, personally. And, like, it's an MIT paper, so that's the reason I put it in. It's a pretty oh, look, reliable source, look, but it, oh, my God. Hey, look, it may very well be the case that this oversupply of goods is – it makes sense. An oversupply of goods is causing, you know, too much use, usage waste. However, you know, I guess it's one of those things. You have to take the, you know, the bad with the good in that, yeah, we get more variety. It might be worse for the environment. The last thing you want is just one type of product. Yeah. You know? That's right. It's, that leads to inferiority and that leads to – uh, less creativity as well. Yeah. Like, you know, I love the variety of search engines we have. <laughs> <laughs> you remember when we used to have a variety of search Yahoo, engines? Excite. I, you know what I used to use all the time? Netscape. Was Netscape, wasn't yeah. there? You Netscape. know what I used all the time was Ask Jeeves. Ask oh, Jeeves, yes. Yeah, that yeah, was my favorite Ask back Jeeves, in the day. Yeah. Oh, but Google yeah, is a lot better around. than those things. Yeah. yeah, Google's much better. But once again, it's pr- completely monopolized the industry. Yeah. Just Google it. We've still got Bing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, but if you're going to compete with Google, at least try to be a little bit like Google. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, oh. like it's like you know, mobile phones. Like, you all these companies are released, like you know, Apple released a new model phone, so all of a sudden you get all these other ones that kind of copy that design. It's like, yeah. okay, well, they're just trying to compete. They know Apple has that's a successful a, product, ex- yeah. successful product. Okay, but like Bing. Fucking Bing. <laughs> it's just like, you know, I used Bing restaurants, the other day. restaurants near me. They've come up like, you know, 
war in Afghanistan. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you want to eat sushi in Tokyo? You're like, no. I asked for Portuguese in Sydney. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's uh, right. Yeah, all right. Well, look, at the end of the day, if we're going to get serious about recycling, it needs to be a concerted effort between us as consumers, as well as governments, as well as businesses, you know? Yeah. And it needs to be a global effort, too, because it doesn't matter how much recycling we do in Australia, if they're going to be huge consumption of mm. plastics or whatever we're talking about in the US and some of these countries that have higher populations and no plastic pickup. Sorry, did you say global effort and US in the same sentence? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking of that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm really speaking to deaf ears, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we should turn this one into a video, nice and simple. Can we turn this into a tweet, 140 characters? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. You Basically, can't... what I'm saying is please try and recycle more and please try and buy more recycled <laughs> shit. Okay? It will really Makes help sense. the planet. It does. I can imagine it would. Oh, the other thing I want to say is social science is shithouse. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you very much, Burn. That was um, an insightful, very well researched episode. I'm so sick of reading social science papers, mate. <laughs> we need some more harder sciences in our next topics, Jesus. Yeah, if you want to no. send in a topic, suggest that we could research. Please don't make it a soft science. No more psychology or social science. Give me something meaty, people. <laughs> Well, I was thinking, because we're sitting here watching the hockey, <laughs> concussions might be a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. That seems right, well, like that, a more Next solid week, science. guys, we're going to do an episode on concussions. It's great. It's not going to be sort of first-hand data collection, is it? Yeah, no, I'm going to start. just going to kick the shit out of you for an hour and see how you feel. <laughs> Let's see if I can record after. Yeah. <laughs> do I get to fight back? No. <laughs> no, it won't work. Oh, Bernie you kicked me. <laughs> <laughs> just run into the wall a few times. Yeah. Yeah, so... Thanks very much for joining us, guys. Um, if you would like to become a Patreon, it obviously goes a long way in helping uh, us to create a semi-good podcast and, <laughs> and, and it gives Burnt more time to research. It also helps us with flights and you know, getting to live events, getting, you know, getting to guests and all that type of stuff. That oh, Equipment. Equipment, even just data storage and stuff like that. It all goes a long way. So we thank you so much to our Patreons. We can't do it without you. Uh, and we'd also like to thank those people um, who don't like an episode that we do on like a specific area of science. And they turn around to us and say, well, you just lost yourself a Patreon. It's like, oh, God, no. <laughs> oh, that dollar a month <laughs> that was That dollar really a important. month that you're contributing off and on. <laughs> so all of these assholes that are leaving us, you can avoid them by sending us as little as a dollar a month. <laughs> There Even you if go. you can't afford a dollar a month, give us a review on iTunes. Or yeah, we, look, we understand. It's tough times. Is it tough times? I don't know. It depends on your occupation. I don't know. <laughs> well, okay. Well, look, if you're a shoe shiner, then it's tough times, and we understand if shoe or shiners. Or a blacksmith. Or a blacksmith. Okay. Or really anything now that's controlled by robots. We understand yeah. that you are, you know, you, you can't afford it. But if you leave us a review, that's, that's just as good. So we appreciate that, guys. And thank you for those people who leave us all those lovely reviews. We love you all. Bye.